Yeah. And now, our feature presentation. To the Lake Front, on Sunday, June 15th at 2 p.m. Tell, 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 tell all, Muhammad is here. For the Honorable Wallace D. Muhammad has the master plan. Muhammad at McCormick Place. Muhammad at McCormick Place. Muhammad at McCormick Place. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, praise be to God, the cherisher and sustainer of the worlds, most gracious, most merciful, master of the day of judgment. Thee do we worship, and thine aid we seek. Show us the straight way, the way of those on whom thou hast bestowed thy grace, those whose portion is not wrath, and who go not astray. Amen. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, we greet you with the greetings of all the prophets from Abraham to Muhammad, and greetings of peace Assalamu alaikum. We must thank Minister Naeem Akbar for his most valuable words on the subject of cultivation and development of the self. Today we are taking the subject that we find in Bible Genesis chapter 9 verse 7 I quote and you be ye fruitful and multiply bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. We will make briefly some comments on this subject, be fruitful and multiply, and then we will discuss some terms that are very popular and well known in the teachings received by Master Elijah Muhammad from Master Quran Muhammad. These terms are devil and cavey. We will discuss these terms with the hope that they will make us understand better the meaning of our subject be fruitful and multiply. Many who are not trained in religious knowledge believe that when God said to Adam and Eve or to the family of Noah after the flood, be fruitful and multiply, that he was speaking to the physical person.
person that we should have children, many children, and that we should multiply as a physical people. This is not a bad interpretation or not, not a bad meaning. Righteous people should multiply. I heard the late Honorable Elijah Muhammad say, may peace and blessings be upon him forever, say that the good, the righteous people, they should have many children. Well, we can understand this without going into any explanation of it. But certainly we should be able to understand also that we don't need a commandment from Almighty God to come to us to get us started with families. Among the animals we find that they multiply abundantly and many of them are faster, more productive that is, in that sense than human beings. So it seems that we are playing up an unimportant and insignificant message when we take the statement in the Bible, be fruitful and multiply, to mean or to be speaking to a physical multiplying, physical birth and a physical multiplying. Actually, this is referring to the mind. It is referring to intellectual birth, development. Intelle intellectual cultivation. That is, the, the cultivation and the growth of the mind. And God is saying, now that I have given you the words, the way to develop your willpower, and the mind, the world that your willpower lives in. Now be fruitful. Cultivate your mind. Produce abundantly. This understanding will lead us to a strong society. But the other understanding, if we put emphasis upon physical multiplying, physical birth and physical multiplying, it will lead us to a life of mental death. We will ignore our mental needs while trying to develop the physical. The physical develops because of the internal strength of the, of the being developing and getting enough strength to feed upon the external world, that is the physical. For that reason, we have schools to train the minds of the youngsters and develop their minds before they come into adolescent age or into puberty and be bothered with the urges of the physical body. If we can get their minds develop first, then their minds will rule over their physical urges and save them from becoming just a big population or a numerous population of physical bodies. So it's, I don't think it's necessary to go into any great length to try to show us that it is more important to cultivate the mind that it is to put emphasis upon the physical body to populate the earth physically. Physically, Those people who will fill the earth with their knowledge are the rulers of the world. Those who will fill the earth with physical bodies only are the slaves and subjects of those people who have filled, filled the world with mind. Now we would like to briefly 
go to the term jinn as it appears in the Holy Quran. And I read now from chapter 72, verse 1. Say, it has been revealed to me that a company of jinns listen to the Quran. They said, we have really heard a wonderful recital. This verse, a uh, chapter on the jinn, it go, goes on to show us that the jinn people here, are the jinn, they came to believe in the whole Quran after listening to it and hearing it. We read in the footnote of the translator, that is Abdullah Yusuf Ali's translation of the Holy Quran, we read in his footnote, footnote 5727, wherein he identifies the jinn as people. But people who have, who have not cultivated their divine nature. So because they haven't cultivated their divine nature, these jinns are not worthy of us calling them human beings or people. In religion, that is in Bible and in Quran terminology, man means a developed mind that rules over the forces of the physical body. And people mean a collective group of human beings with well-developed minds that rule over the forces of the physical body. Because of this, those people who are not able to rule over the forces of their physical body and because of that, they have neglected the cultivation of their mind. They are called jinns. Also in the Holy Quran, we are told that this jinn stage in the life growth of man and woman is a natural first development in the growth of human society are in the growth of civilization. We are not saying that one has to become a jinn, but civilizations normally come through the jinn stage before they reach the stage of the civilized, the well-developed mind. To better understand the Quran term jinn, we should refer you to the Bible term Gentile. In the Bible, when we study the life of the Gentiles, we find that they are those people who did not belong to Judaism are to that religious order, or social order, that put emphasis upon the development of the intellect, the mind, and the higher human aspirations. Those people that were more engaged in a life of war, physical war, a life of physical sport, a life of sex and sex worship. Those people who had not yet come into the light, real light of civilization and had taken on a, a desire and a love for knowledge, for the higher cultivation of the mind, those people were called Gentiles in the old Bible 
are days of the Old Testament and they, these Gentiles were identified as Europeans. They were the Romans, the Greeks, and other people of European or Caucasian origin. It is not simply because they were Caucasian that they were Gentiles, but because the Caucasian, the Europeans, had not come into that cultural development we call religion or divine knowledge, they were living a Gentile or a life of uncivilized people living under the forces of the physical nature. They could not con control their hunger for such as physical food and drink, wine and physical pleasures. They could not control their, their hunger for sex. They behaved vulgar and immoral in public. They were people who even had spiritual rights or spiritual uh, services uh, that involved very low, bad, filthy, unclean habits. Philic worship and a lot of other very indecent things were associated with uh, Europeans called Gentiles in the Bible. So this is a State, uh, stage of development that we can fall into if we don't know our true identity and that true identity is the human willpower and the body that that willpower takes on by feeding on the mind a world of excellence a world of knowledge wisdom and understanding we continue now reading from the Holy Quran. This time we quote from chapter 47, verse 16. In this verse, men are described as worshippers of the forces of their physical body. And I read, and among them are men who listen to you, but in the end, when they go out from you, they say to those who have received knowledge, what is this he said just then? Such men whose hearts God has sealed and who follow their own lusts. Now these men, the meaning here for the expression has sealed their hearts it means that they have turned their hearts from God and because they turn their hearts from hearing divine knowledge then God turn away from them and leave their hearts closed or sealed and who follow their own lusts this is not necessarily speaking to the sex the, the lust that uh, the powers or desires that we identify with sex but it's speaking to all those forces that arise in the physical body or in the biological form such as hunger for material wealth hunger for sex uh, hunger for physical worship what we call vanity all these forces are forces of the physical body and these forces can influence one's other appetites those appetites we have for culture appetites we have for art if we pursue a life a cultured life a civilized life a life of civilization wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the human excellence while not yet being able to control 
the physical forces of our body are the forces of our physical body, these forces can influence our culture. And though we may be wise in some respects in human history or in human culture, we will find ourselves characteristically or uh, uh, outwardly by image, by our social image, we will find ourselves to be a people as jinn are undeveloped, given to barbaric, uh, barbaric uh, desires, given to vulgar, savage nature. The Quran goes on to tell us that the devil himself was once a jinn. So from this we should understand that devil means one who has knowledge and understanding, one who has come in contact with some revealed knowledge, some divine or some scriptural guidance, but he has not been strong enough as a human being, uh, that is, as a creature of willpower and mental development, he has not been strong enough, so he has given in to the forces of his physical body and he uses, he uses the revealed knowledge to promote the acquisition of material wealth. This is the devil. The devil means an evil person. The Holy Quran says, and the jinn we created before. And the Holy Quran again says, and Iblis, that is the Satan, the devil, was one of the jinns. He was a leader of the jinn people. And we still, we can easily understand this when we look at uh, the society today and see among the people who give themselves to, the, to, to working for uh, and advancing the savage, vulgar nature of, 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 of the society, that these people often have leaders. And their leaders are more knowledgeable than they are. Therefore, they have power, more mind power, and they're able to lead, lead them. And we find that these people, they often disguise them, these leaders of the jinn, leaders of the people who can't develop their mind, uh, willpower, and mind nature, these people, they follow these wiser leaders, and these wiser leaders are able to disguise themselves and pretend to be members of a good order, members of a religious order. They can pretend to be uh, respecters of faith and divine truth, but their life tells us where they are. Therefore, they are, in truth, devils. Master Farad Muhammad, he used the term devil just as scripture uses it. Jesus himself, he called the white man uh, uh, not the white man as we know the white man, but he called the, call, the Jew, the Jew, a devil. He called the Jew a devil because the Jew was deceitful and trying to trick the prophet Jesus, so Jesus called them a devil. He even referred to one of his the, the, the fi disciples as the devil, not meaning that the man himself was a devil, but that he, at that time, was giving himself to that particular nature, uh, or to those particular forces of the physical body that bring about uh, the growth of devil in the person. So Jesus said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. And uh, he told the Jews that you, that I know your father, he said, not the Jews. He was not speaking to all of the Jews. He was speaking to the hypocritical Jews, those who were fighting the march of truth. He said, I know your father, your father fell from heaven like lightning, that he was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. And he called them the children of their father, the devil. So we see that these religious master teachers have used the term devil to describe a person who give themselves to the rule of physical forces over the rule of intellectual 
forces, moral forces, the higher the forces of the higher human form. He they have called them devils. They have called them devils. And Master Farad Muhammad did not do anything different. He did not bring in any new language. He only used the old language of scripture and called the Caucasian people devils because they uh, had done so many wicked things in their history that uh, when taken as a body of knowledge and when seen in association with the people who carried out those acts, we cannot help but say that that is the description of a devil and the people who did those things were a devil people. So now we have also a term, the term cavy. Cavy also addressed the European Caucasian who build a world of bricks and asphalt, big cities of material, uh, great material structures, and they live in mighty giant structures they call homes, skyscrapers, and living in these homes, these physical homes, they have not uh, been able to come to life as a real divine person. And so he called them cavy, meaning that they have taken on, are uh, built, uh, built around themselves an environment like a cave. A cave is a dark hole in the rock. There's not much life in the rock, in the cave. There is uh, only the human life. You only see, they only see each other. They don't see the natural life. So they live in a dark and a dead environment. When you come to the big cities, you find a dark <clears throat> and dead environment. The trend now on the part of uh, the builders of the uh, remakers of the urban communities, the trend now is to bring in more of the natural life, to bring in natural trees, natural flowers, natural scenery. So we see that they have discovered themselves that this life of all stone and brick and cement and asphalt does produce a kind of caveman environment, a kind of cave that keeps out the natural light of the natural world and the natural beauty. And you be ye fruitful and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. We'll make briefly some comments on this subject, be fruitful and multiply and then we will discuss some terms that are very popular and well known in the teachings received by Master Elijah Muhammad from Master Farad Muhammad. These terms are devil and cavey. We will discuss these terms with the hope that they will make us understand better. Oh, uh, yeah. And now, our feature presentation. On Sunday, June 15th at 2 p.m. Tell, 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 tell all, all. Muhammad oh, is here. Oh, oh, oh. For the Honorable Wallace D. Muhammad has the master plan. Muhammad, Muhammad at McCormick Wicks. Muhammad at McCormick Wicks. Muhammad at McCormick Wicks. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitani Rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم 
Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'abudu Wa Iyaka Nasta'i The meaning of our subject Be fruitful and multiply Many who are not trained in religious knowledge, believe that when God said to Adam and Eve or to the family of Noah after the flood, be fruitful and multiply, that he was speaking to the physical person that we should have children, many children and that we should multiply as a physical people. This is not a bad interpretation or not, not a bad meaning. Righteous people should multiply. I heard the late Allah Elijah Muhammad say, may peace and blessings be upon him forever, say that the good, the righteous, amen. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, we greet you with the greetings of all the prophets from Abraham to Muhammad, and greetings of peace, Assalamu alaikum. We must thank Minister Naeem Akbar. for his most valuable words on the subject of cultivation and development of the self. Today we are taking the subject that we find in Bible Genesis chapter 9 verse 7. I quote إِهْنِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمَ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ نَعِمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ God most gracious, most merciful. Praise be to God, the cherisher and sustainer of the worlds. Most gracious, most merciful, master of the day of judgment. Thee do we worship, and thine aid we seek. Show us the straight way, the way of those on whom thou hast bestowed thy grace. Those whose portion is not wrath, and who go not astray 